Hey everybody, glad to be here for Thursday with you guys. And if I have some weird connection problems and so on, I'm actually not really at home. Um, hold on a second, let me fix that. All right, I'm at a different location, okay? So with that said, it's still gonna be a good show and glad to be here with you guys. So just wanna advise everybody, Give me a follow over on the X platform, and you know, I'm gonna start to ramp things up over there. You're going to see that probably soon. All right, let's see. I'm still checking some settings, make sure you guys can hear me loud enough, and um, yeah, just let me know if you can because you know, switch locations and everything kind of got reset, you know what I mean? So, I'm not really at my normal studio right now. Um, so what we're going to do now is going to kick it into the comments. I just want to advise everybody to please smash the like. As you see on the thumbnail, massive quant update. I want to thank the one and only quant papa for some of the amazing research. I'll just save all that good stuff to when we get to it, right? My normal spiel. Um, I'm sure more than enough of you guys have seen the news about the Ripple XRP or the you know Ripple stable coin and so on. Uh, decide I was going to get into that as well. Give you guys my own key takeaway. There's something that you might not be aware of that was mentioned on the Paul Barron network. I don't know if you guys watch him, but um, I'm going to try to bring up my history real quick. Yeah, let's see it real quick. So um, when we do the Ripple segment, there's a particular coin that you've heard about. I kind of briefly talked about it. Just giving you a heads up, it's, it's Biddle, right? I talked about it a little bit. Paul Barron has a quick segment about that. And believe it or not, it is in relation to what we're trying to talk about with, uh, you know, the, the XRP stablecoin segment. That segment is only about roughly five minutes. I've gone ahead and fast forwarded to that. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I will go ahead and pull that research over to that segment. And of course, last but not least is the BSV segment, New World Record. What is that all about, right? Well, if any of these things are your thing, smash the like. We're currently at, let me double check on the other screen, YouTube, 14 likes, 22 people are here so far on YouTube and 35 total. So guys, it really does help the YouTube algorithm and also X to do that may seem like a silly thing, but more than appreciated, okay? All right, let's start off with the first comments of the day, and it comes from the one and only Brittany. She says, happy Thursday. Hey, that's two days in a row, Brittany, being the first comment. You know, it used to be Tim Shea, who sprays from far away, right? Glad to have you here, Ms. Brittany. And speaking of Mr. Spray from far away, it's Tim Shea, who says, hey, glad to have you. The mayor of crypto, crypto commissioner, representing the 589th district of XRP Army and fellow constituents. Boy, what a day to be here for the XRP, right? Right. All right. We also got Digital G in the house. GG. He says, what's up, everyone? It's currently 7.60% more profitable to mine BSV over BTC. And wow, uh, 1 million plus TPS they have been having on Turnip. Good point. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all the nice uh, DMs. We also got the one and only Mr. Boom. Sooner and his dog Monica chilling on the couch. Shout to you, Mr. Boomer. Gonna hit the 40 yard line, the 30 yard line. You know, when Michael Cornwell is late, all right. Well, you could put two and two together. What yard line is he really at? Oh, just depends. All right, going further down, we have uh Crypto Homes Triple Seven in the house. Welcome back, welcome back. And we also have Uncle Thursday all here on Thursday. I don't care what you're doing right now. Everybody needs to give Uncle Thursday a dab because that's how it goes when you have the one and only Uncle Thursday in the house. So I don't know if Uncle Thursday is just here because it's Thursday or you saw that, hey, Max is talking about quant, whatever the case be. Welcome, Uncle Thursday. If I had an Uncle Thursday NFT, I would just drop it right now, right? Anyway. Um, we also got Patrick Collier commenting on X. I did see on X they got a better way of, um, you know, they, they literally have the thing, like I was telling you guys, like how YouTube is right now. Or before it wasn't like that. It would be all in the middle of the screen, 
and it was just kind of funky. They had an update. It's literally just like YouTube. So it makes me tempted in the future, kind of like how we used to do Twitter spaces, right? Do we just do, you know, for example, a broadcast on X? Now I get it. Twitter space doesn't have all the functionalities of the broadcast. But man, how cool would it be if you could do a live stream Twitter space? You know what I mean? Instead of a broadcast. That would be the ultimate. Maybe Elon Musk is already ahead of it. Who knows? I've noticed the updates. I think it's pretty cool. If they do incorporate that. That'd be game changer. All right. Glad to see Patrick Collier with his old school avatar. I guess he got tired of be calling the nice version of Shug Knight. He's probably like, you know what, Max? Forget Shug. You know? Scared to look. Ain't no such things as halfway crooks like uh, Shug Knight, right? Anyway. Crypto coin guys in the house. Welcome, welcome. Just going to welcome a few more of you guys. Oh, man. Tim Shea is right on top. I didn't even have to ask for that. That's so cool. Thanks, man. Do appreciate that. Um, oh, you're on time today, huh? Interesting. Uh, well, maybe you're referring to me being 15 minutes late, you know, but you guys know the buffer window, right? Sometimes it's 15 minutes, you know, but no, usually no more after. There's been once in a while, it's been 20, I think the very latest then is like 25. And then some of you guys are like, great, I can't stay long, right? I get it. On the weekend, you can though. All right, so we're going to welcome a few more of you guys. We're glad to have you, River. Dennis Leal is here. Oh, you met yourself? Oh, I get it. Yeah, some people, oh, because the teacher thing, you know, kids are late, class is late. I get it. I get it. All right, but yeah, Dennis Leal, welcome, welcome. Glad to have you. SPL is in the house. Let's just welcome a couple more of you guys. Cool Kid Crypto, related probably to Cool Cat Crypto. I remember you. What up, Max and everyone? Hey, welcome, welcome. Cool kid crypto. You would have to be technically cool kid uh, coding, right? What is the relation? You know, are you the son of cool cat crypto, or will we ever know? Probably no one we'll never know, but that's okay. Uh, glad to have you though. All right, we have the one and only Elon Muff. Now let's go state this. All right, I was I gotta fix it. I was gonna do this just for you, man. This is just for you. I was going to do this super cool thing, and it didn't work out. So it was this. Let me show you something. You're going to get a kick out of this. Um, where is this? Where is this? Where is this? Let me see. I didn't remove it. Dang it. This Edward Vincent would say, dang it. Anyway, it was like, I'm going to show it in a second. I got it like, you know how like this one is all nice? It was going to be this, but like, you know, it was going to be removed. And I was just going to leave it there just for the hell of it. You know what I mean? Because, you know, or if it was like, you know, when you're like taggies, I'd be like, all right, we got a special report from sideline reporter Elon Muff. And then I would just switch it to this. And then everybody would know it's the Elon Muff segment. You know what I mean? But. Anyway, I'll get that sorted out just for you, man. Just for you. Okay. All right. Going further down, some of the comments. Uh, let's see here. We have Eric Onassis, not to be confused with, you know, Aristotle Onassis. He can't wait to retire wealthy, right? Like Aristotle Onassis, right? Anyway, uh, welcome, welcome. Glad to have you. We do have the nice version of Shug Knight back. All right. Uh, crypto coin guy just want to thank me for doing live streams, but will Max do a 24 hour live stream when Bitcoin hits 100K? Um, when that happens, I will also continue it with a 24 hour live stream about the Elmo token. And I'll just talk about Elmo 24 7. People are like, is this April Fool's Day? And I'm like, no, it's not April Fool's Day. And people are like, scam. And I'll be like, nope, not scam. But let's talk about the Elmo token. And I'll get into it for another 24 hours. And then instead of seeing one, you know, thing here from sleep apnea, you will see two. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, enough talk, right? 10 minutes in, we're going to get into it again. Smash the like. Let's see if we could tick up to a hundred. That'd be great. Um, I know I, I don't get the numbers I get when I, when we talk about Chasmy, but it's okay. There's also some fear in the market as you guys know. So it is what it is. Let's welcome Blackwood in the house. I think there's a couple more of you guys. We're going to recognize here in a bit. And 
what is this? Elon Muff, instead of having a light to call out Batman, you could have a muff light that shines a big muff on the screen. My God. All right, Daniel. Can't pronounce your name. Apologize. I apologize. I hope you stick around. Daniel. All right. I was going to say. He says, Excellent Pete. Yes, thank you so much. I do like that. It does make me wonder if you're secretly Quant Papa because that's what he has all the time, but that's okay. Um, we don't have Swift Coin tonight, but you can join us in the future. I did chop up the video of last week's live stream with the one and only Rue Black. And again, I keep my promises. And I was just like, you know, he's going to get two of them. So normally we chop stuff up here and put in the recorded video section. It was his birthday last week, and I want to help Brother Rue grow, okay? So you're going to see two videos over on his YouTube channel. And, um, man, I made an absolute killer fire thumbnail, man. I'm telling you flat out, like, um, it, it, it's nice. I'll just save it for later, all right? All right, let's see here. We also got Arm to Fight You. Thank you for being here. Welcome back. And Daniel says, let's go Casper Labs. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's all good. Cool, cool, cool. All right. What we're going to do now is get into the first topic of the day. So just because you see certain things in the thumbnail doesn't mean they get covered first. The first thing that we're going to talk to about today is Ripple XRP. It's not a super long segment um, as far as like being like an hour, two hour deep dive or something like that, right? It's, it's, a, it's a reasonably long deep dive. But um, I understand everybody's been covering this today, right? I'm not oblivious to the notion of everybody covering this. But I also want to give you guys my own two cents on, you know, some of it. So I thought I would get into it and uh, let's go ahead and pull up some of the branding real quick. It's been a while since we put like an XRP avatar up there. This is the XRP segment of the night. So let's go ahead and start things off with the official announcement from Ripple. And here it basically is. As you see here, straight from Ripple. It mentions the stablecoin market is booming around 150 billion today and projected to soar past 2.8 trillion by when 2028. Not my projections, it's theirs and so on. And I'm sure they have something to back up the citation. And when it comes to Ripple, I take the word for it. Teach his own, right? But as we get more into this, you will see some other things basically mentioned here. And it says that's why this or later this year. They, as in Ripple, are launching a stablecoin paid one-to-one -to, -one to the USD on the XRP ledger and Ethereum. Now, I also still want to state this for all these people who are like, oh, oh, yep, that's right. The World Bank did talk about that. They were not referring to this. They're referring to Ripple's XRP, and they're referring to Stellar's XLM as having a stable value, right? Not as in a stable coin like peg to one one. This is a totally separate thing. Just throwing that out there. There is a press release, but of course, this is a thread. In reality, Ripple doesn't really have to do a thread um, because they have this verification, but maybe they feel as though it works better this way. So let's get to the second part of this. They said that this move extends Ripple's reach into both institutional and DeFi realms. Now, when we get into a quick little segment from Paul Barron, I'm not going to play this whole video, but you will see something that we've been talking about. And that is, of course, this whole thing of Biddle. And that's BlackRock's supposedly like their stable coin. Is Ripple looking to compete with BlackRock? Is it an actual thing? We'll get into a little bit of, about that. And if anything, if there's enough community demand to talk more about some of these things, we will get more into that another particular day. This whole move being into the reach of both institutional DeFi realms, diversifying use cases, enhancing their payments infrastructure to bring the world's uh, traditional and decentralized finance closer together. Now about the stablecoin, because that's what you're here for. Ripple stablecoin will be 100% backed by the U.S. dollar deposits, U.S. government bonds and cash equivalents, and Ripple pledges transparency and monthly third-party attestations, ensuring trust and, of course, reliability. Jumping more into this, it says stable coins. A lot of us already know about this, but let's just mention it. Serves a pivotal entry point to DeFi. I've stated this numerous times, especially when it comes to jazz. Entry points. Entry points create volume. 
stable coins become enablers to create more volume and more access. So this is spot on with a lot of the things I mentioned in the past when it comes to stable coins. But introducing a trusted enterprise grade stable coin to the XRP ledger will generate more use cases. And I love this part because bam, everything that we've been talking about for maybe two years. Liquidity, again, creates more volume. Opportunities for developers, so on and so forth. There's um, just a few more things to get into. Simultaneously, we know the future of crypto is multi-chain launching this stablecoin on both the XRP ledger and even Ethereum opens stores to cross-chain interoperability. And back to the topic of stablecoins. So Ripple's move into stablecoins isn't just about innovation, it's about contributing to the XRPL ecosystem and setting a stage for a more robust and diverse crypto landscape. Kind of like the terminology here, because a lot of times, you know, let's face it, even from the Ripple point of view, there's not a lot of talk about, or enough talk, I should say, about the XRP ecosystem. You know, a lot of times it's just focusing on the native token, XRP, what partnerships they got going on, what countries are going to, you know, use this and so on, right? So that's what's up. And we're going to jump into the next part of what we have. Can't just end it there. Mr. Joel Katz, a.k.a. David Schwartz, decided to give his own two cents, and I thought this was worth also mentioning as well. Mr. Joel Katz states, a high-quality USD stablecoin on the XRPL with its decentralized exchange and features like issued currencies, auto bridging, which of course XRP is the native currency, to facilitate trades between other assets, and the AMM, which of course, you know, we've been covering that a lot as well. Will Fix have been talking about almost every day will be game changer for users and, of course, devs. Now, he does cite Brad Garlinghouse. Let's take you to that particular citation. And, again, Brad Garlinghouse says what? He says, launching a stablecoin is a natural step for Ripple as they bridge the gap between traditional finance, crypto. We have, one, the years of experience, and, number two, the regulatory footprint. And, of course, number three, strong balance sheet. And number four, a network with near global payout coverage. I mean, say what you want, whether you're a fan of them or not, they sure have a lot of partnerships all over the world. It's hard to dismiss that. But like it says, they offer the best of crypto-enabled payments using XRP and their future, sta uh, future stable coin together. And, of course, he has that quote, to quote, back to this, stable uh Stablecoin market booming around 150 billion today. That's a lot of money, right? A lot of money. So I want to jump into this part. And again, this is from Paul Barron. And then, of course, I'll give you guys my own little two cents of everything that's transpired in the recent news with Ripple's XRP. But in this segment, Paul Barron, he gives some of his thoughts. And uh, I thought it was interesting because even with what you see here, you know, you know, this is basically like worth getting to, at least in my opinion, because he talks about, for instance, the Ripple stable coin, and then he gets into the whole thing of Biddle. So I'm actually going to rewind it for a second. I mean, it's just a, a moment. I'm going to bring it back to where he talks about the Ripple stable coin, and then I'll fast forward to the other part that's worth, you know, taking a look at in regards to BlackRock and Biddle. Do you know about Biddle? Have you been paying attention to that? A lot of people haven't really been talking about it, right? Is it really that much of a big deal? Well, I think it is. But we're going to go ahead and share this as well. I might go ahead and turn up the volume for you. Everybody can hear it. Let me go ahead and share this. Again, this is from Paul Barron. A lot of you guys are subscribed to him. Let's go ahead and play this. Smash that like. Thanks for being here. Here we go. Uh, let's go over to the topic for today. And I want to get on to this topic. Ripple is set to issue a USD backed stable coin, uh, bringing a lot more utility and liquidity to XRP. A couple of points. This will be 100% backed by the US dollar deposits. 2.8 trillion by 2028 is the estimation. And the launch itself will be available on the ledger, on the XRP ledger and Ethereum blockchain. So that's a, a pretty significant move here with plans to expand to additional blockchains and decentralized finance. So DeFi is going to play into this over a, a while during this launch. Um, it, it This, of course, being built to utilize the XRP as the bridge asset. I think everybody kind of gets that. 
all the big benefits they talk about enterprise grade kind of the benefits that ripple brings to the marketplace compliance mindset yeah well they've kind of had to be compliant to a certain extent liquidity on dexes i think this will be a big factor and then transparent stablecoin reserve this trumps usdt and the problems that tether of course has and then multi-chain compatibility probably the most unique uh feature of the xrp uh token for a stable coin here's brad garlinghouse talking about it launching a stable coin is a natural step for ripple as we bridge the gap between traditional finance and crypto and uh, we have the years of experience, regulatory footprint, strong balance sheet. I would agree. This is a really good move for Ripple as a whole. And it's kind of funny because this has been one that we've been watching for a while. When does XRP, you know, when does Ripple launch their own stablecoin? They were asked many times on camera about this. He was very cagey about it, which knew means that it was going to happen. Jeremy Allaire even jumps in and says, hey, welcome to uh, the party. Ripple, uh, it's encouraging to see more companies take on the compliance. Listen, there's a lot of room for this, and you have to think about the market in general and what the capacity is. I know today we're only dealing with around maybe $2 trillion if it 10Xs, according to Matt Hogan. This was him talking, but actually promoted by Stake with Pride, which, by the way, is a Cardano bull, I believe. All right, I'm going to fast forward to the next part because it's just talking about the Cardano cardano stable coin fail some of you guys actually know about that right i don't want to get into all of that today if it was necessary we could but it's really really not that necessary anyway um fast forwarding to the part about biddle this is good stuff let's go ahead and play this let's reshare it here we go and here we go stable coin on cardano here's carlos domingo talking about the first on-chain dividend for biddle uh, was paid. This is the beginning of something very special. And I think we have, uh, we've probably been one of the few channels that have really isolated on this and talked about this um, to a certain extent to give you guys a little bit more education. This is a big deal because it pairs up kind of a stable coin, if you think about Biddle as a stable coin, uh, and that, of course, all coming through BlackRock. Now, granted, it's, you know, it's just the beginning. Here's the max total supply right now, only nine holders, but 42 transfers. We're going to see some movement here. They're starting to move around. Remember, this is only a couple of weeks old. It's very new. And the likelihood of this starting to really take off, I think, for Wall Street and what uh, BlackRock is doing is a big deal. So could it be an XRP versus a BlackRock? Remember, these are big money entities that they're basically going to be competing for uh, with what Securitize, what Domingo was talking about, and what BlackRock is doing versus what Ripple is doing. So pretty cool stuff. I think, because this is all good for and very bullish, I think, for the markets in general. The SEC, interestingly enough, the SEC is seeking a ridiculous 300% of unregistered sales from Ripple. This, of course, we know about from the case itself. And I think they're just, you know, trying to lash out. SEC typically collects about 11% of unregistered sales. But in the Ripple case, no, we want 300% of sales uh, that were uh, deemed as uh, registered security. So, you know, I think that's just, it is what it is. You're going to see fights like this all the time. All right, Ripple back. Okay. So obviously you guys, can, you know, go to his channel, learn about the Ripple future verse, all that stuff. I want to get back into the topic of where we're mentioning some of the stuff about, you know, stable coins and so on, right? So I'm going to pull up some info for you guys. And basically speaking, <clears throat> This is my own notes. So back to some of the references you saw from Ripple, back to some of the references you saw from uh, Brad Garlinghouse and then also uh, David Schwartz, right? So in conclusion, I want to give you guys kind of like my own little two cents, right? Maybe you find that to be valid. Maybe you don't care. I don't know. You care a little bit. Otherwise, you, why would you be tuned in? Anyway, so this announcement, U.S. dollar-backed, uh, stable coin provided by Ripple on the XRP ledger. At the end of the day, why is it really so significant? Now, I will agree with Michael Cornwell, Elon Muff. I do feel as though it could bring in not just two trillion, but maybe even more in the future years. Um, you know, on chain, and that in itself is that's big, right? Absolutely, always worth pointing out. But there's a few things I would like to get into. Um, you guys know how to do it about two or three different reasons that are worth pointing out. So number one, keep in mind, it's increased utility. 
Isn't that a great thing? Increase utility for what though? The XRP ledger. Again, back to the Garlinghouse comment about contributing to the ecosystem. Finally, some examples about that. So the stablecoin itself paid at a 1-1 ratio to the US dollar does in fact attract new users and developers to what? Don't get twisted. Don't overthink it. The XRPL. So this could lead to more activity and potentially more value for XRP. That sounds like a big win in my eyes. And of course, as we know, XRP is the native token for the XRPL. What about the whole thing of like focusing on decentralized finance, right? DeFi. There's a little bit of mention in regards to that. Even Paul Barron with the segment talked about that just briefly. Well, stable coins, as we know, are the key component of DeFi, right? And basically it allows for financial transactions without traditional institutions. I mean, isn't that the whole point? Of course. By introducing a stablecoin, Ripple itself positions themselves as a key player in growing DeFi market, or maybe introducing the premier DeFi market, teach his own. But say what you want. At the end of the day, this will create a sense of trust and transparency. And that's always a good thing. Whether it's slow tech that we talked about yesterday with BTC, having that trust, and so on. You got to have trust and transparency, and especially during a time in which a lot of people felt as though they didn't have any more trust in Ripple because the SEC and how they attacked them. Now, I get it. Some of you guys feel as though, you know, we're going to get a uh, full Ripple victory. I've seen a lot of content creators talk about this, but that, you know, they feel as though it could be at the end of this month. In reality, no one really knows. But my thing is this. When we talk about trust and transparency in itself... Ripple claims that their stablecoin will be backed by reliable assets like U.S. Treasuries. Now, have you guys been watching some of the deep dive content that I've been talking about, right? Remember, Stellar is kind of killing it in that realm right now. Is this perfect timing when it comes to the talk of U.S. Treasuries? Me personally, I think so. Again, if you haven't seen those two videos, you owe it to yourself to check that out because it literally mentions that 50% of all RWA will go through Stellar. So is this perfect timing to come out with these statements? I'm going to say yeah. And on top of that, understanding that while Ripple is looking to have a reliable asset, such as things backed by, you know, U.S. Treasuries and so the U.S. Treasuries, excuse me, aiming to be more trustworthy than some existing stable coins, obviously is a big win. Now, it's hard to understand or predict the future about, you know, the impact of XRP itself and so on. And I get that. But the next thing I want to get into is back to the whole thing about this launch of the stable coin. And I know sometimes when talk when we talk about stable coins, it can sound kind of boring, but it is worth noting, right? Big news today. So launching a stable coin is a natural step for Ripple because at the end of the day, we see them as bridging the gap between, of course, traditional finance and crypto. These are some of the things that Brad Garlinghouse literally mentioned. And he gave us about four different reasons. But for us that are here tonight, I want to get to three key things I would like to elaborate a little bit more on um, compared to what just Brad Garlinghouse mentioned. So this does, in fact, boost, of course, the XRP ledger ecosystem. Again, back to what we were talking about earlier. The stablecoin itself, along with XRP, because, uh, you know, a lot of people are wondering, what has it got to do with XRP, can create a powerful combination for Ripple's XRP ledger. Yeah, true. I think so. I think that's valid. Stablecoins in themselves offer price stability, while XRP facilitates faster transactions. Now, listen to this. This could very well attract more users and developers, of course, to just that, the XRPL, like we also mentioned before. But at the same time, the point is to create more of that vibrant, vibrant, excuse me, and thriving ecosystem. We need to see more players. And especially since Stellar, let's be honest, with the full rollout coming out soon of Sorbonne, well, say what you want. It does seem like, yeah, they're recognizing the competition between each other. The other thing I want to get into is this. It's Ripple competing with the stablecoin market. You know, whilst Tether and Circle are the dominant ones, and they always will be, 
there's other ones, you know, like, um, you know, we've seen some other ones that some people kind of iffy about, right? Tron's US double D. And there's some other example ones or examples of ones out there. But this does very well allow Ripple to compete with that market. And let's face it, the stable coin market in itself is absolutely massive. USDT Tether always consistently does the most amount of volume. Like I've always mentioned, stable coins create volume. They are the enablers. They give people access to the particular asset that they're choosing, whether it's XRP or you know QNT and so on and so forth. But it's the projected growth. How can Ripple take this further and grow even bigger? By entering this market, Ripple can gain a foothold in a lucrative sector of, of course, the crypto industry. For me personally, as a as a guy that's not just part of Stellar Army, but also the Ripple XRP Army, I think it's a right step in the right direction. All right. The third thing I want to get into before we, technically speaking, wrap up this segment of the night. You have to keep in mind that this will strengthen the bridge between crypto and, of course, traditional finance. How so? Well, Ripple would position itself as a bridge between traditional finance and, of course, crypto. And with their experience and also regulatory compliance, because let's face it, if they weren't, the SEC would be after them forever. They set the cornerstone of being an established network to bring a lot of things to the table combined with the stability of just that, a dollar back coin. Now, I understand there's a lot of talk of, why would they, you know, they want to get into this mix because, you know, the dollar is going to collapse. If that's the case, guys, let's throw in the whole towel about the whole market. I get it. You know, if our dollar collapse, well, what about things like Tether? What about things about like USDC and so on? So they understand what they're getting into, whether we want to agree with that or not. But at the end of the day, I feel as though that this could very well make Ripple a really attractive solution to what guys financial institutions looking to course explore crypto that's a major major win overall we all have to remember that the stable coin launch this particular one for ripple is a strategic move for ripple to solidify itself and position themselves as the quote-unquote leader in crypto enabled payments and, of course, it strengthens their XRP ledger ecosystem and allows them to compete, of course, in this ever-growing market. I also feel as though it further solidifies their goal of bridging the gap, like we said before, with traditional finance and, of course, crypto. That's going to conclude the Ripple XRP stable coin coverage of the night. The next bit of coverage we're going to get into is this new world record that BSV accomplished, and who was that with? So we're going to jump back into the comments for just a brief moment. I did see that we kind of ticked up, so I am pleased about that. Again, please smash that like. Let's double check how we're doing on all of this real quick. And basically speaking, um, I actually closed out my other tab. Why would I do that? Well, that's weird. Well, let's see. We have, according to YouTube... Um, 43 likes, 65 people watch on YouTube, and a total of 140 combined. 77 on X, 63 on YouTube. So kind of split. That's not bad. I'm glad to see, you know, not one dominating the other, but that's okay. All right, let's kick it back to the comments just briefly, and we'll get to that next segment for you. I want to welcome some of you guys who just entered into the chat. Um, let's also recognize, um, don't know how to pronounce your name. It's A-N-D-R-Z-E-J-D. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to call you Andy, if that's okay. Maybe you don't like that. Let me know if you don't. Ripple's stablecoin equals liquidity using XRPL, and XRP is a bridge currency. See, this guy has done his homework. Thank you very much, and welcome. Um... Our Chadwick Stellar has its own stable point. Great point. It used circle used to literally be referred to as Stellar USDC. It's about time XRP got into it. People mentioned that before. Even Paul Barron was pointing some of that out. Let's read this from Elon Musk. Six thousand people just got scanned on uh, PEPY 
P-P-Y pay, Peppy pay. That's not good. All right, let's read this. Uh, going further down, Daniel says he's buying more Casper. Cool. If it dips below 0 0.035 again, his XRP bags are stacked. Nice. Glad to hear it. Let's welcome back uh, Ahmed. Glad to have you. Thanks for commenting on the some of the recorded videos. Uh, Ahmed says, when moon ISO 222, I really believe November, in late November 2025, but teach his own. All right. Elon Moff says, so just the XRP stablecoin alone. Again, I think we mentioned that earlier. Two trillion. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's welcome back Joseph Lawson. He's a QNT. He's been accumulating. You've been accumulating QNT for two years. Got 300. Wow. You're out there with Quant Papa, man. Nice. Very nice. Well, you enjoy this segment of the night. Um, so cool stuff. It is a great hole. Richie Rich, welcome back. You're always making me want to go get Mexican food. But um, Mexican food is scam when you're trying to save money for more crypto, right? Anyway, um, he says, Max with the 6.41K subs milestone. Oh, well, thanks, man. Um, you know, uh, oh, yeah, that was my milestone. Well, for you guys to know about the old channel, so I joined up with the, this. I don't want to really mention the whole channel too much, but anyway, you know the drill. You know the history. I just I got to recognize some. It is a milestone. I forgot about this. So I want to join up with my own partner. He was at six point four k. So this is a big achievement for myself because it tells me I was finally able to do it on my own. And he is so in my rear view mirror. So thank you for pointing that out. And I didn't realize that. So, yeah, anything over 6.4 um, is good stuff. My next big milestone would be 14K because that's what we had when I left, right? And then, um, yeah, so obviously 10K is a big deal. But for me personally, it would be 14K or higher, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, maybe, you know, some of you guys like, well, you know, want to see parties and stuff like that. We might do that. Maybe. Just depends. My thing is this, we could have a party, but no fluff. You know what I mean? Got to bring some alpha, right? Anyway, you get what I'm saying. Not to say I always bring alpha because sometimes I don't. All right. All right. Let's see here. Stefan Echo, welcome back. I appreciate you, man. You obviously really like the content. All right. Bernard B. What up, brother? Max, been trying to catch up, been working out of town. Grinding out the info on my ride. Appreciate. Oh, thanks, man. I do appreciate. You'll appreciate this segment coming up, um, especially the quant segment. I know the next one's BSV, but you know, I wish my opinion about this banks overtaking XRP becomes a bank slash global standard. Uh, we just talked about it actually. Um, I think that if that's what you're referring to with stable coins and so on, hopefully that's what you mean. If not, then maybe that's something I need to update myself. So. You always go back and rewind. Um, Stump Rider, hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Glad to have you, Stump. Jason, did I miss the quant talk? Not yet. We're, we're almost to that. Um, this next segment is not super long. All right. But thank you, Jason. Guys, welcome, Jason. Okay. Consider changing your avatar. I mean, you know, Jason's a common name, but it's up to you. You don't have to. This helps us identify you a lot easier. All right. Um, so let's see here. Gerald, hey man, welcome back. Hey Gerald, I just want to give you a shout out. Thank you so much for showing your support to our fellow brother Channing Harrell. Um, you know, I didn't have no time to whip something together and, and also send it to Channing. This was kind of spontaneous in regards to quant today. So, but I'm looking forward to having Channing back and doing some uh, you know quant collaboration. But yeah, I do see on his channel that you always give him a nice uh uh you know, comments and, you know, you interact, which helps the algorithm. Guys, if you like quant coverage every day, you should follow guys like Channing Harrell. H-A-R-R-A-L, right? You definitely use your support. And he's also covering other things now like CRO, which is cool. All right, G, welcome back. Have you checked out Block 5? V on, or V, the co-founder is U.S. Tether CEO. No. But that's interesting. 
All right, Jason, he's been watching me for years, and this is his first day posting here on live. I've always missed the live streams. I didn't know that. You know, it's cool seeing people like yourself kind of come out of the woodwork. So I do appreciate that. Thank you. Um, means a lot. Boom. All right. Co-founder Reed Collins. Well, thanks for the info. Welcome back. Gee, I know you're from the Black Root community, if I'm not mistaken. All right. What we're going to do now is turn on some branding. Let's get into the BSV coverage of the day. And I want to give a shout out to, I think it's Digital G. It might be Digital G or Icy Amphibian or both of these guys. So I apologize on which one it is, you know, but thank you to you guys for the info. Um, this actually comes from Ryoshi. A lot of you guys follow Ryoshi. And let's just jump right into it. So with that said, uh, we haven't done this in a very long time. It's kind of a cool little thing. So what we're going to do is simply pull this up. There we go. All right, so breaking. What in the world does Ray Ushi have? Well, he mentions this right here. And as you can see, he says, breaking. What exactly is it? Well, it is this whole thing referred to as CH Senti. And if you're wondering who they are, they have a little, I don't know, disclaimer, if you will. If you were just hold your mouse over this or use your phone, all right? Senti.ch is Senti Limited, technically speaking. They are the cash register of the 21st century. I mean, wow, that should catch your attention because it literally sounds like ka-ching, ka-ching, right? Um, but basically, they are the cash register of the 21st century together with all your other payment options on a single integrated device. Not a lot of followers, but that's not the point. How many times have we seen examples where, you know, Something that's a big deal doesn't really have a big following, kind of flies on the radar. Is this another example? Let's jump into it. So CH Senti, like I pointed out, makes world a record with its fast, secure, stable coin tech on public BSV blockchain at uh, Finovate Europe 2024 in London. Now, hear me out. A lot of talk about stable coins lately, is there not? Is this perfect timing? I mean, say what you want. Some people feel as though, eh, it's just all coincidence. No, it's not just coincidence. You know, these bigger players, especially when it comes to payments, are all, you know, having a strategy on how they're going to go about, you know, the, the near future that's coming up in regards to payments. And you better believe that there's going to be ones that, of course, stand out. And for me, I get the whole concept about, you know, so you guys would say like fake Toshi and stuff like that. But for me, I'm betting on the tech. You know, again, IBM, I can't dismiss that. Visa, MasterCard, can't dismiss that. And this is another one that I can't dismiss, you know, because at the end of the day, it is about the tech and it should be about the tech, right? So in an unprecedented display at Finovate London, Senti AG has set a new world record by processing. Yeah, you read that right over 1 million micropayments within just 24 hours, with each payment valued at precisely one cent, utilizing their proprietary stablecoin tokens on a public BSV blockchain. That's pretty big news in my eyes, and that's why I wanted to bring it to you guys. Say what you want, a lot of talk, or a lot of talk about stablecoins today, obviously with Ripple's XRP and so on, but this is from the BSV point of view, right? So this milestone not only demonstrates near zero transaction costs, but also the superior speed and scalability of Senti's innovative tech, firmly establishing their leadership in the micro payment domain. I'm going to blow this up for you to see this a little bit bigger. I'm going to take myself out of the screen. And what you'll see here is some of this stuff. So you do see that there's some big players here, obviously, FinTech Core. Dash devs, you have, for example, um, some of these other names. Maybe you're familiar with them, maybe you're not. But getting more into this, 
Senti Finovate Europe. Probably not pronouncing that right. And of course, they cite BSV. Well, is this that big of a deal? I really think it is. I really, really think it is. And the reason why is when we go to the citation and you go over to informaconnect.com slash Finovate Europe, well, look what it mentions. On the 25th through the 26th of February 2025, you will see that there's some big things going to happen. What exactly are they? Well, they have an agenda. They have key speakers, right? But when you see terms mention about cutting-edge fintech innovations, impactful connections, accelerated growth, say what you want. That right there, accelerated growth. Who also used the term about accelerated growth today? Brad Garlinghouse. Literally, word for word. So, again, I don't think it's a coincidence that you see all this talk about stable coins today. But teach us on. 1,000 plus decision makers, 600 plus banks and investors, thousands of meetings, 35 plus demos, 100 plus speakers. Now, I did check out the agenda and, and you know, it wasn't bad. But when I got more into this, I said to myself, well, what about some of the other things? Well, when you get into it, you will see attendees from across the globe. Let's go ahead and full screen this. And getting into this, look how you see this little graph, if you will. Notice how the UK basically dominates. You know, see what you want when we get to the quant segment. You know, the United Kingdom has so many things going on when it comes to, you know, their infrastructure and how they are getting, you know, the blueprints, or I should say already got the blueprints going for, you know, digital commerce, if you will. But look at this for a second. You have the UK, attendees by region. Most of these guys are always from from the UK and say what you want. When we talk, get to like, you know, even the quant segment, you know, all origins always point to bank of England, the BIS, but you know, this is of course BSV. And of course, even when it comes to North America, very, very small sliver, right? Anyway, thought I'd point some of that out. This guy who is Chris Higgum, head of payments and cars for secure trust bank states this is going to be a brilliant event with a great format. Seven minute pitches let you hear directly from fintechs who you can then engage with on the day to make the connections. My key thing for all of you guys is recognizing that there's going to be a lot of big players here and a lot of venture money here. Now, I did, out of curiosity, try to see if, you know, Tim Draper um, from, you know, Draper Associates and you know, the guy that we always talk about in regards to SwiftCoin is going to be in, in attendance. And I didn't see anything mentioned with that. But again, understanding fintechs and understanding venture capital coming in and so on. Lots of references in regards to that. So all that's worth pointing out. In conclusion, I want to share my own little two cents with you. So this whole thing about the topic, the breaking news that we shared earlier about Senti Limited making this world record with its fast, secure, stable coin tech on, of course, BSV's blockchain. Well, it's an unprecedented display at, of course, Finovate London. But what happened is very, very significant. And I don't think it's just something that we should just say, oh, that's cool. and just move on. No, not at all. There's literally three things that stood out for me that was significant. Number one, let's get into that. It's a micropayment milestone. Now, I know in the article, it kind of briefly touches base on that. But you have to keep in mind, while Seni did, in fact, process over one million, excuse me, one million micropayments in a day, that showed the world the potential for blockchain innovation. And, then it's, and particularly, like, what they got going on with BSV. To be able to handle a large volume of these very small transactions, let's face it, it is game changer. And it also lets us know 
that it's not just Ripple and it's not just Stellar and some of these other ones that always get mentioned. There's these guys, right? So this could be revolutionary for things like, for example, paying uh, for online content or rewarding users for their activity. Who do we also know is part of that mix? Jasmine. Again, understand that there's going to be other ones that are looking to compete. I personally invested into all of this. Why? Because if we talk about the fear of missing out, that would be one of the biggest examples. Now, of course, a lot of people are not bored with this, and I get that. But for me, the other thing I want to get into, number two thing that's significant, is that this in itself creates a thing called near zero transactions. Now, what is one example we've already seen that we boasted about and shared on this channel? It's Stellar in regards to them boasting about what they do with stable coins. Again, within the last two, three months, lots of talk about stable coins. So just in case you never saw that segment, I'll catch you up. Stellar did boast the whole notion that, hey, we have proof we can transfer 10 million in USDC, you know, a circle, formerly known as Stellar USDC, and the transaction cost is only 0 0.5 zeros in a one. And they also have this slogan, and maybe they'll keep sharing it. And that basically is from Denel Dixon. It shouldn't cost money to send money, right? And I think, if anything, Stellar is going to win that race, if you want to call it that, um, as far as being the cheapest of them all. But what about the fastest of them all? So can you have a combination of being the fastest and nearly close to what Stellar does as far as being the cheapest? Well, maybe that is what makes BSV also stand out among a whole slew of things. But the whole notion of having near zero transaction costs is huge. The fact that Seni was able to achieve this with near zero transaction costs should catch your attention because it's another big advantage of like the competition and who's doing what and where they're doing it and who they're sharing that with. In this case, London with fintechs and VCs. Say what you want. We have our narrative of what is a big deal and they have their narrative. And their narrative states there's a lot of VCs paying attention to this. So I rather pay attention to what the big money is compared to, no offense, a retail narrative. Traditional financial systems, guys, have always, you know, or I should say often, have had high fees, of course, for microtransactions. That's a true statement. But you have to keep in mind, the traditional method will make them outdated and impractical. The third thing, which everybody, for the most part, understands, stands out for BSV. And let's be honest, even for all the haters that just want to have people focus on the whole idea of Satoshi being a charlatan, they can't get over the tech. And for me, I really put the focus on the tech. So what am I talking about? It's the scalability of BSV. This whole thing about Senti, you better believe it is a huge achievement and it shouldn't be dismissed. So this achievement being done on the public BSV blockchain definitely suggests that BSV in itself can handle a high volume of transactions without sacrificing speed or efficiency. Say what you want, even though some people love Solana, they have the speed, but sometimes they don't have the efficiency. Now, maybe going into the future, they saw that, and I would have to research that more myself, and this is no bash on Solana. I think Solana overall is pretty solid. But you have to keep in mind, this whole thing, with BSV and Seni is a major selling point for the BSV blockchain platform. Do we have other examples? And if anything, when we get to this particular conference that's going to happen, and BSV is at front row center with all these other institutions and VCs that don't represent us as in retail, well, do people FOMO into BSV then? And if so, how much will be worth then? For me, I've always been consistent about this. I'd rather take a chance on this 
at these prices than to be wrong in the future because I gave in to a narrative. Now, in closing, I want to talk about two last things. For BSV moving forward, you have to understand it's going to create two main things. Let's get into this before we close it out. It's going to create increased adoption. Isn't that the whole point? If BSV can be established as a fast, secure, and scalable platform for micropayments, it could lead to wider adoption of BSV for other purposes as well. Oh, I didn't think about that. Again, guys, don't get the tunnel vision. Understand when we talk about ecosystems, it means just that. There's a whole slew of other use cases. What about validation on the BSV uh, network or the, the technology in itself? This in itself, this real world use case does very well demonstrate the potential of BSV's technical capabilities. In a nutshell, Seni's achievement is in fact a very positive development for BSV and could help solidify its position as what? A leading blockchain platform. This is why so many people understand BSV will always pound their chest and not give in to any FUD whatsoever when it comes to BSV. And I will point this out, and I'll, I said it once and I'll say it again. Have you noticed when it comes to other particular projects, you see a lot of people get flooded out. But there's a lot of smart people also who are part of the BSV army, and you don't really see them getting shaken out. It'd be interesting to see the ratio in regards to long-term holders versus other particular blockchains, right? And we've done these comparing and contrasting before. Heck, we've done it with, for example, SwiftCoin. Shows that like, you know, 90, it's like a 90% hold. I would like to in the future, and maybe I'll, I could do it now, but I'd rather get into the next particular segment because I don't want to make this a big, long, deep dive. Um, but it would be interesting to see some of those particular ratios. So with that said, that's going to conclude the BSV coverage of the night. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And with that also said, we're going to go, excuse me, we're going to get into the main topic of the night, the main highlight. And this is a deep dive. And it's not just like any other deep dive. This one is going to take the cake, but I want to get back into the comments. If quant is your thing, you'd be glad that you tuned in tonight. So let's go ahead and get back to what we have. It is from the one and only G. He says, Block 5 got a partnership with Visa for NFT rewards. Thank you for that. All right, KK, welcome. Glad to have you. He says, good stuff. Thank you, thank you. All right. Yes, sir, coming for the Black Root and Underdog communities. Yeah, Underdog, Black Root are great. I just got ahead and uploaded the chopped up version like I promised for Rue. And um, it'll be on his channel. I don't know, whenever he gets around to uploading it. So should be cool stuff. All right, let's read this from George Delos. Oh, this is another example. So Jason and George, listen to this, guys, have been watching this channel forever, and he appreciates all the information that you've learned. You know what, man? You know, I kind of had a crappy day, to be honest. You, did, you and Jason made my day. And if there's any other people that are listening right now, it doesn't take much, all right? Come out of the woodwork and make a comment. You might make this guy's day. So George, Jason, that means a lot. Thank you so much. Stefan Eckel, thanks guys to spread this out. Yes, you're very welcome. Let's read this from Dennis Lil. BlackRock undervalued or Block View, not BlackRock. I was gonna say, did I just say that? BlackRock really undervalued. Duh, right? Like, you know, like hello, right? Anyway, yes, a Block V <laughs> undervalued. Yes, Recons and Eric uh Poulier. I probably not pronounced that right. Let's read this from Digital G. GG. BSV is much bigger in European fintech market versus U.S. market. It's rare to find much Bitcoin content here. Interesting. GG, big blockers all over small blockers any day, every day. You got to be careful with that, right? You know, you got to be careful with that, especially if you're going to an event with your buddy and you go to a pub, you know, you got to watch out for the blockers, right? Don't want any of those type of blockers. All right. Will Fix says, you demand, Max. Hey, Will, thanks for being here tonight, man. It means a lot. All you can see is wizards around the portfolio. 
Oh, you're hilarious. That is funny. I'm sure you're busting the gut now with that comment. That's cool. The wizards, right? It's a little inside joke we have. Um, Mike Cornwall, you know how we was talking about our, you know, you know what contest, right? With the portfolios. That's what Will's talking about when he sees the wizards and eagles surrounding it, right? Flying around. All right, let's read this from Stefan Eckel. Bitcoin SV, more than a year ago, out of his wallet, Bitvavo delisted it. Oh, no. All right, let's read this from Dwight Von Trest. Hey, welcome back. I haven't seen you in a while, Dwight. Like I always said, Dwight, you and your significant other always looking healthy and vibrant. You guys glow, right? You know, my aunt years ago, um, she used to, what was it, sell Mary Kay products and so on. And I wasn't a big fan of Mary Kay, but I have to admit, there were some of the things that she used, and it made her skin glow. So that's what it kind of reminded me of. Anyway, read a couple more comments. Daniel says, low key, wish we see Casper down to 0.032 so you can load up big time. I mean, you know, when we talk about ones that are part of the ISO group, I get it. Casper's not officially, at least I don't think so, but it's always mentioned in that group. Um, you know, it's like, what, which ones are really on sale still? Well, XDC, um, you know, Casper. I still don't have it. I get it. You know, DAG, right? Constellation DAG. Um, there, there's some more, obviously. Heck, we could still even say Stellar, right? Absolutely. Trust Truth. Big up from the Rue fam. Great show. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Trust Truth. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Brian Dowie's in the house. Glad to have you, Mr. Brian freaking Dowie. All right, let's go ahead and bookmark that. We have a good, a, you know, a reasonably good crowd of people here tonight. 167. Let's get into the quant coverage of the night. And this is going to take the cake, in my opinion. Um, let me pull the branding up. I got to fix the one for this. It's a little bit too big. Sometimes it kind of gets in the way, you know. But anyway, let's start it. So, guys. Big up to Quant Papa, the one and only, in my opinion, the goat of Quant Research. Guys, I'm telling you flat out, this, you know, we don't have the biggest of crowds here tonight. How would you, how should I restate this? Um, all right. Have you seen Star Wars The Force Awakens? Remember that scene when they ask uh, Han Solo about the Force? And they're like, is it real? And he's like, yeah, it's real. It's true. All of it. Well, how about this? Quant, the overledger, and how we talked about this thing being the God token. Is it true? All of it? Yeah, let's get into all of it. All the examples we've been talking about for the last couple of years, right, or more, um, about quant and this whole idea about quant being able on the back end connected to everything and how much the value of everything could literally be. How would you like to finally see the real stuff instead of Max talking about it, right? Or showing you little slivers of some of this stuff. How would you like to actually see, you know, this stuff that we've been talking about? I think the answer is obviously yes. This is going to be a real treat for you guys. If you, you know, I'm, I want to just state that if quant is your thing, you really want to be glued to the tube on this one. Smash that like. It's going to be great. If you really appreciate it, share the show. Okay. All right. Again, big up to Quant Papa. Check this out. This, we have gone ahead and fast forward to this part. Now, I want to state this. Everybody that's a super quant fanatic, like the guy that was in the comments earlier to mention that you have like over 300 quant. My God, that's amazing. You want to watch this whole thing. But for the purposes of me not wanting to do a you know two hour deep dive video and only get one subscriber from it, because, you know, time is money and I do value some of my time. I do want to just get to the juicy part of this video. We have some other illustrations to get into, but. How would you like to hear from Gilbert Verdian? So with that said, let's go ahead and play this. And basically speaking, you will hear, like I mentioned, from the one and only Gilbert Verdian. And in this, Gilbert was interviewed from Fintech Futures. 
Um, it was one day ago and it says, what the fintech? <laughs> so what the, you know what? Um, and yeah, it's this latest podcast, basically. I won't spoil it for you, but it's a lot about big emerging trends, central banks, all this crazy talk. We're going to go ahead and play this to the end. But in reality, it's fast forward. So it's, it's about less than five minutes. After that, I will show you the Quant Papa Maximus Crypto collaboration. You're going to love it. Finally, after all this time to get into some real examples with visuals. Yes, that's right, with visuals. All right, here we go. So we see ourselves as, as the key infrastructure of the new digital finance economy and the enabler of how existing institutions and, and firms and venues can benefit from implementing digital assets and, and blockchain technology to gain access to all of these new markets, new products, and, and new innovation. So we're quite behind the scenes. I mean, a lot of people will be using Quant without knowing about it, but we're the infrastructure enabling this new economy that's, that's emerging. Thanks again for joining us today, Gilbert, and it's been a great, uh, great conversation. I mean, to close out the podcast, we have our now infamous fintech jail. So this is where we ask for an industry term, buzzword, or trend that you've seen or heard enough of, or of course, you can advocate to free one of the previously incarcerated terms. So, what would be your selection for this week? I think on where the market is heading, that there's a, a flight to safety because people are very risk averse, and what we're seeing is by commercial banks implementing tokenize bank deposits, most people will start using commercial bank money rather than stable coins, which are not issued by banks for risk and safety reasons. So we're going to see a, a flight to safety coming once all of these banks have their digital dollars and digital pounds and digital euros in the system. So I think stable coin in its current form should be put into solitary confinement, not just jail, <laughs> because uh, we're going to see that migration of digital money, but to safer forms, which is really around commercial bank deposits and, and tokenized bank deposits. So if we can take stablecoin out of jail, but put it in solitary confinement, maybe that's a new option. Yeah, for sure. And well, I think over the course of this podcast, you've put a, a forward a strong case on the stablecoin front then. I mean, blockchain is still often linked with crypto and stablecoins. Do you think with the evolution of the space now that more people are aware of the distinction between crypto and stable coins and the technology that's driving them, or is it still often just inherently linked with crypto still and is more education needed there? I think it's starting to disassociate very clearly between the regulated and the non-regulated side. Crypto will always be there, it will have its place, and you've got institutions placing crypto like Bitcoin, for example, in, in an ETF to have a new form of value for investors to invest in and get better returns, and it's just another asset class. The crypto side of things, I think it's being stamped out in a regulatory way, but we see stable coins issued by non-central banks, non-banks, commercial banks, without the regulation and the backing that, that you have with, with existing institutions. So when commercial banks start issuing their own digital pounds and digital dollars, and, and we're seeing the beginning of that. I mean, PayPal did their PayPal dollar, for example. People are, are naturally going to start moving to something safe because of the risk involved. If it's with your bank, it's trusted, it's backed, there's recourse if it's lost. And we're seeing banks starting to offer those same services that non-banks are doing. So banks are taking on fintech, banks are taking on DeFi, and they're able to do it in a safer and, and better protected way. So it, it will be a natural migration to safety, and that will leave a market for stable coins and, and crypto, but it won't be big compared to what you can get from a regulated institution like a bank or like a stock exchange or, or someone else from that man, or an asset manager. Excellent. Well, in which case, I'm happy to extend the sentence for stable coins then and move it into solitary confinement, as you say. And yeah, if we get a strong argument again to release it later down the line, we'll have to wait and see for that. But thank you so much again, Gilbert, for joining us for the podcast today. It's been a pleasure. Likewise. Thank you, Paul. It's great to be here. Well, that's all we have time for this episode. Thanks, of course, to Gilbert for joining me. Okay. So, guys, uh, 
I know that's just a, a little taste and we're going to get the next thing, but come on. For all those that are watching on the live, of course, you know, if you're watching on the Shopped Up, you don't know what we're talking about. But can we all agree now? Lots of talk about stable coins. A again, another example. You even heard it from Quant, right? So Quant, XRP, BSV. My God. Next thing you know, we're going to have XOIZ, P, QRS, TUV, WX, Y, and Z. Why did I say that? I don't know. But anyway, we're going to get into the next part of what we have. And let's jump into this. So Gilbert Verdian being cited here. This is from a screenshot from Quant Papa. And in this recording, you know, this is a screenshot from the recording. Look what Quant Papa has basically highlighted for us. Well, it goes on to mention some of these key things. So it says, how Quant can help. We stand ready to support the UK's financial services community as it leverages new forms of digital money. Of course, that's Gilbert Verde in top right. This was uh, recorded, I believe, from a webinar. It says, learn. Visit Quant Network for weekly insights, future of finance. How about standardization, how they can lead together? It says, they're going to link to what? Yes, that's right. The Regulated Liability Network, RLN, when it rises for payments. Do you understand how crucial that is? Remember how people were saying that was speculative? Oh, Max, you're just connecting the dots. You and Quant Papa just connect dots. That's all you guys do. You just love to connect dots. Go play Connect 4 and go boil it, mash it, stick it in stew somewhere else. You could take your research and you can shove it, Max. Yeah, I've heard some people tell me that. But this comes officially from Quant, officially from a webinar about what? The RLN. So now, guys, it's no longer uh, a case of speculation, right? The RLN and Quant is a real thing, absolute real thing. And I had to point that out because, you know, it's nice to do research and then have it pounded home and solidified from who other than the one and only Gilbert Verdi, right? So getting more into this. Yes, that link to the regulated liability network, RLN, when it arrives for payments. And before we get to the next part, I know I keep going back and forth on this. Why is that so significant? Other than tons of deep dives that we've done. Understand what is tied to the RLN, M10. And when we talk about some of these blockchains, right? Like on the previous segment that we talked about, you know, 1 million TPS or higher. Some cases... Yeah, that's amazing. Great reports. But my main thing is quant, proof of the RLN, and then on top of the M10 tied to it. So yes, M10 does 1 million TPS like we mentioned. So this is how central bank money and so on will do high throughput, high transactions per second, right? And to see this officially be mentioned, presented from Gilbert Verdian, that speaks volumes. Absolutely. Full screen it again. Let's read this bottom part. What's it say? Opportunity for IA members. I blew it up a little bit more for you to see it, just in case you're boomer mm -hmm. effing sooner with his dog Monica on his couch. Opportunity for IA members to test their use case with tokenized bank deposits by June 2024. Interesting. Now, look, I understand the testing use cases is one thing. Okay. But I'm telling you flat out, this is why we're so excited about some of these things. Now, this is not a buy the rumor, sell the news. I'm not saying that June 2024 is going to be the biggest thing because, again, that's testing. Testing is one thing. Mainnet's another. But if you can see how this can come together, especially when it comes to, you know, November 2025, in my opinion, which is going to be the flip of the switch, and I could be wrong, but all the evidence, in my opinion, the research, not just myself, Quant Papa, and so on, but many others from the research, research consortium agree that something big in regards to the end of 2025 with ISO 222 going live, okay? But understand that ISO TC307, the Quant Network Standard, right? complements also the ISO 222 standard. So I consider a lot of these things blessings in disguise for even me personally. I haven't hit all my quant goals, but I know I will. 
And I, I look at quant as kind of like what Boomer F and Sumer was talking about before. It's like it's still on sale if you look at it from the bigger, you know, picture. OK, so IA members. OK, how long ago was this posted? Right from the webinar. Well, on the bottom left, it's hard to see, kind of blurry. Digital money, a discussion with investment association members, January 18, 2024, Gilbert Verdian. But again, he's presenting this in this webinar. OK, very cool stuff. Let's jump into this other part. Remember how we talked about the Hong Kong Monetary Authority? Remember how we talked about how it was a, such a big deal, deal? Lots of talk about Hong Kong, right? Lots of talk about, for example, you know, the bigger picture of things. So understand that Hong Kong has more than positioned itself on a global scale where, you know, uh, you know, fintechs, um, VCs, finance democracy, you name it, AI, Hong Kong all the way, right? Jumping down into this, all this is pretty much highlighted from, you know, Quant Papa. Hong Kong Authority, or Hong Kong Monetary Authority, I should say, has unveiled that the Embridge project is expected to introduce a minimum viable product by the middle of 2024. Again, this is why this slide is literally right after the other one. Because of what Gilbert Verdian talked about. So product by the middle of 2024. Middle of 2024 would basically be, again, June. If Embridge's implementation is successful, it may pose a challenge to SWIFT's leading payment system. You read that right. And could influence similar shifts in payment methods across different uh, regions. You know, what's this cited from? This is literally cited from the Quant Network site. When you get more into this, look at this juicy stuff. Remember this guy? Tony McLaughlin? Where's he from? Well, we've cited him before. He's from Emerging Payments and Business Development at City. Remember how I did all those deep dives about City? You guys can always go back and watch that if you're new. All right? I would highly recommend it. He goes on to mention some of these things, but it says a public-private collaboration to modernize cross-border payments. Interesting. Is this a reference to some of these other things that we talked about? Well, it's actually expanding on it. You have the BIS, Project Agora, Central banks, banking sectors to embark on a major project to explore tokenization across border payments. And, you know, we've talked to you guys as years off about the BIS. What about the whole thing of, you know, like I was hinting a while back about the New York Federal Reserve. Remember how we talked about Project Hamilton, MIT, um, you know, New York Federal Reserve. Quant doing something for the future of a digital dollar. Right. I understand. A lot of talk about digital euro and all this stuff. And we have examples about that. But before we get into specifically about the digital dollar, I'm going to play one more video for you. Okay. So on this, this will be good. You, you'll appreciate this, especially if you're a quant fanatic. Um, goes into full detail on this little presentation about just that, like digital euro, right? So I'm going to go ahead and actually share it as a video file. I do have it saved from earlier. And basically speaking, let me see if I could pull this up. Hold on a second. Um, let me see. I've got to make sure I have the right one and not the wrong one. Let me pull that up. I think it's, uh, yeah, did you, yep, here we go, 4 underscore 603. I just forgot to name it. All right, let's share this. This guy is going to talk specifically about this. Maybe you know who this guy is, maybe you don't, but the point is it's um, at the House of Commons, right? Why is that important? Let's go in and play it. This will be good when we, when we get to the part about the digital dollar. Here we go. Digital pound, a new form of money for households and businesses. This paper aims to open a national conversation about the future of money in the UK. The way we use money, as it is across the world in the UK, is changing. Cash will remain important, but banknotes issued by the Bank of England are being used less frequently 
by households and businesses. New technologies are allowing for the emergence of new forms of digital money and new ways and devices to pay for goods and services with it. International developments have the potential to affect the UK domestically and our position as a global leader in finance. Ensuring that public trust in money remains high and that forms of money and payments meet the evolving needs of individuals and businesses are fundamental responsibilities of the Government on which Parliament must have its say. We are determined that the UK should remain at the forefront of innovation in money, payments and financial services. This is part of the Government's vision for a technologically advanced, sustainable and open financial services sector, a sector that is globally competitive and acts in the interests of communities and citizens, creating jobs, supporting businesses and powering growth across all parts of the United Kingdom. A UK digital pound would be a new form of digital money for use by households and businesses for their everyday payments needs. The digital pound would be a new form of sterling, similar to a digital banknote and issued by the Bank of England. For people and businesses, the experience of using a digital pound will be very similar to using other forms of digital money. For example, it will be accessible online via smart smartphones and computers, as well as through cards that could be used at point-of-sale terminals. I want to be clear that the Government is legislating to protect access to cash and ensuring that the UK's cash infrastructure remains sustainable long term. So as part of the wider landscape of money and payments, it would sit alongside and not replace cash, a digital counterpart to familiar, trusted banknotes and coins, and subject to rigorous standards of privacy and data protection. It would be denominated in sterling, and digital pounds would always have the same value and be interchangeable with the equivalent physical banknote. Unlike crypto assets and stable coins, the digital pound would be a central bank digital currency, sterling currency issued by the Bank of England and not the private sector. A digital pound would help to ensure that money issued by the central bank, which is currently only available as cash, remains available and useful in an ever more digital economy. Knowing that there is an ultimate backstop to convert your money money in your bank or in your e-money account, into cash or a CBDC at any time is the foundation of confidence in all forms of money, both day to day and in a crisis. All right, so that was from the Evening Standard at the House of Commons in the UK, right? The bottom line is this. I know I said, you know, digital euro. I meant digital pounds. Sometimes it's kind of hard to keep up with all the lingo, right? I'm human, right? At the end of the day, I'm still human. <laughs> but um, you got to appreciate with what he's talking about. You know, there's a lot of fear when it comes to the mention of CBDCs. Gilbert Verdian has mentioned this and, they, you know, has recognized uh, some of those fears that people have. Martin Hargreaves, right? Especially. Um so to he literally hear this gentleman from the House of Commons literally, you know, go into detail, it's, it's, it's not that it's going to replace cash. It's, you know, kind of like the concept of over or um, ISO TC 307, actually, you know, the, the quant network standard complementing ISO 222 side by side, even with cash in this case, where they're going to go with that. As we jump more into the outline that we have, I'm going to share a little bit more of why all this matters. So show the example about the BIS. Let's jump over now to um, some of the juicy news. This was April 3rd, right? What is today? The 4th. This was yesterday. Man, shout out to Quant Papa, man. I can't thank him enough. Would you like to see some of the juicy of juicy? I think you will. So let's go ahead and pull this up. And man, big, huge news, okay? Where does it come from? Who's it cited from? It's from the Federal, or excuse me, the uh, Federal Reserve Bank of New York from NewYorkFed.org, technically speaking, right? Same thing, basically. Let's pull this up as well. I've gone ahead and zoomed in. That way it's really easy for you guys to see it on your screen. And so 
Look at this. Press release. New York Fed to participate in joint international research effort on what? Tokenization and cross-border payments. Guys, before we even get more into this, do you understand why we did all this research a long time ago? Remember all that stuff that was speculative? This pounds home 110%. Why myself and others put so much effort into covering Project Hamilton, right? Remember Crypto Lulu talking about Lewis Jackson? He wasn't the only one. So many covered this, and so many people from retail was like, oh, I didn't hear nothing directly from anyone. How would you like to get it directly from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York? Yeah. Let's wrap our heads around this for a second, because this was yesterday's report, and you didn't really see it posted all over X, and that's okay, too. So, jumping into this, <clears throat> Federal Reserve Bank of New York, Innovation Center, yesterday announced that it will participate in an international technical research project. Again, research projects. Think about this. Why you had Project Hamilton and all these ones, right? That will explore whether tokenization of central bank money and commercial bank deposits operating on a shared programmable ledger can improve wholesale cross-border payments. Like, even before getting into BIS, it's the BIS. And does it mention the BIS? Well, of course, right here. Look at that. Project Agora. Ah, don't you love how we give you guys an outline instead of just giving fluff? Project Agora. Look at that. A new effort led by the Abyss Innovation Hub. Again, back to Innovation Hub. Remember when we talked about Hong Kong Monetary Authority? This is why we do all these deep dives. In partnership with the Institute of International Finance, we'll bring together seven central banks, financial institutions from each of their respective jurisdictions to research ways to increase the speed and transpar uh, transparency of international wholesale payments and lower associated costs and risks. The project will focus on overcoming common structural inefficiencies in cross-border payments today related to differing legal regulatory and technical requirements, operating hours, time zones, you get it, right? Look at this statement. Quote, we look forward to participating in Project Agora alongside our central bank collaborators and continuing to build on the NYIC's contributions to the public dialogue on the future of money and payments, said Per Von Zelovitz, director of the New York Innovation Center. There's just a tab more I want to read about this. Including the New York Fed, the seven participating central banks are who? Bank of England, obviously Quant Network's, uh, you know, connection. Bank of France, a.k.a. Banque de France, Bank of Japan, Bank of Korea, Bank of Mexico, and the Swiss National Bank, the BIS, will issue a call for interest. Call for interest? And I have that on the other tab. For financial institutions interested in collaborating on the project, the BIS and participating institutions will detail the findings of Project Agora through public reports. So understand this. When you see statements about this and you understand the quant network connections to all this, this has already been outlined for a long time. This is why we looked into all the material. This is why we studied all this stuff. But just in case you're still not a believer about it all, here's another reference. And it's from who? It's from the BIS. Literally from the BIS right there. What does this mention? It mentions Project Agora, central banks, banking sector, a bark on major project to explore just that, tokenization, cross-border payments. And this is the uh, the call to action, like it was mentioned from, um, you know, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Like literally a call to action. Look at this for a second. I want th This is good stuff. Great, great research from Quant Papa. So... Understand, we, we really mentioned some of this part about, you know, them joining forces. But if you're wondering about the nitty gritty about Project Agora, which is Greek, by the way, here's your aha moment. Your freaking aha moment. Agora is Greek for marketplace. So when we talk about all of the money or the big money in a marketplace, I'm telling you flat out, I think we, we literally see the writing on the wall 
especially when the BIS spells it out for us. Get into a little more about this. You will see this whole partnership of uh, how they're looking to, you know, provide a large group of private financial firms, um, you know, a call to action. Remember all the talk for the last couple of years about unified ledger? Uh, guys, don't get me wrong. This is not XRP FUD by any stretch, okay? I think a lot of this stuff, you know, obviously Bank International Sentiments also works with, uh, you know, Ripple and so on. But look at what is mentioned. The project, as in this one, Agora, builds on that unified ledger concept proposed by the BIS, will investigate how tokenized commercial bank deposits can be seamlessly integrated with tokenized wholesale central bank money in a public-private programmable core financial platform. Gee, doesn't that literally define the overledger? Yes, it does. You can go to the Quant Network site or even see Guber Viridian talk about that numerous times. Talks about how it could enhance the functioning of the monetary system. Talks about providing new solutions, smart contracts, programmability, while maintaining its two-tier structure. And look at this. Here's a proposal about all this, right? And that went away. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Augustine Karstens. So, I don't know, maybe it's a GIF. Okay, yeah, let's see this. Maybe we can just, no, we can't play it. So it's this is the animated GIF. We'll get to it real quick. Information checks. Information checks to the payment system. Information checks with the with the corresponding bank, and then you see how it flows from the corresponding bank to for the payment system, and the payment system to the information and checks of the bank. See how it kind of goes in from payer. It's just it's kind of like a cycle. It's like an ecosystem. Payment messages um, with a smooth flow. Payment messages with a smooth flow. Interesting. Has to have a smooth flow. What would be the final line step before it can have a smooth flow? Come on, guys. You know the answer to that. ISO 222 would be the answer to that, would it not? I think so. And that's why I feel as though that is the flip of the switch. But that hasn't been mandated yet, right? A lot of things have to happen before we get into all this nitty-gritty, the juicy stuff. Being for... Uh, you know, further down, it says smart contracts enable new ways of settlement to unlock some of this stuff, the transactions, and how basically it's not viable or practical today in turn for offering new opportunities to benefit business and people. But major public-private partnership will seek to overcome several structural inefficiencies and in how payments basically happen today, especially cross borders which will add layers of challenges, legal. We all know about that stuff. I want to explain this to you guys. What are the next steps of what's going to happen? Well, the BIS in itself, like I mentioned, will call for expressions of interest to private financial institutions. Guys, again, it's a call to action. They want all of them, if they can, to join Project Agora because Project Agora is literally what? Greek for Project Marketplace. The IIAF will act as the intermediary and convener of private sector participants. It is crucial to understand some of this stuff, right? Um, several regulated financial institutions will participate representing each of the seven currencies. Specific instructions and requirements will be issued in due course. Being a member of the IIF is not a requirement to participate. Interesting. And all of this was posted on April 3rd, straight from the BIS, and also straight from what? The Federal Reserve Bank of New York? I think that's a big freaking deal, right? Let's take you to this next part. This is a, obviously a big deep dive tonight, and it's well worth it. Whether I get a lot of subs or not, that's not the point. It's keeping you guys informed. I want you to see this. This is from Ledger Insights. You know, a lot of other researchers use this. You guys know who we're talking about. So, Ledger Insights, seven central banks in BIS Project Agora to tokenize cross-border payments. Again, April 3rd, tokenized deposits, central bank money. Again, we gave you that Ripple update, right? Remember how Brad Garlinghouse was talking about tokenized deposits and stuff like that? Say what you want. There's a strategic shift going on here. Or 
it might very well be. Let me come back in the frame for a second. When we talk about that call to action, well, Brad Garlinghouse talked about with Ripple. You even saw the whole thing with BSV. And then, you know, you saw some of these other examples. It does seem to be a call to action. And all at this particular time, all at the same time, say what you want. It's definitely worth looking into. Very, very interesting. So I like this statement here, right? From this lady, Cecilia Skingsley. She believes that tokenization represents the next frontier in digitalization and money and payments. Agora stands out as the most ambitious project undertaken by the BIS Innovation Hub to date. Man, that's powerful. Because you want to know something? We cover many different projects and we talk about, you know, these um, D5 marketplaces. This literally is central bank marketplace. And you have an instance of seven different particular central banks all over the world that are part of this big plan. Man, absolutely massive. All right, let's take you to this other thing that's going to pound it home even that much more before we kind of wrap things up. Let's go ahead and full screen this. Again, shout out to Quant Papa. Thank you so much for the detailed content. So you see here from Signum, okay? We did a deep dive about them a while back. It states here, on December 5th of 2023, it says, when it comes to putting fiat money on chain, most people think of stable coins and CBDCs, right? We talked about that a lot today. But deposit tokens may prove to be more effective. And I think, if anything, that's why Garlinghouse, Brad Garlinghouse, was pounding that home on the Ripple report. And like it says, it's more transformational. In mid-November, Finality International announced a new $95 million fund round led by Goldman Sachs, for crying out loud, and BNB Paribas, including the likes of Euroclear, DTCC, Wisdom Tree, Nomura. Look at Wisdom Tree. We know the Ripple, uh, you know, the Stellar Connection. But this marked the latest evidence of the rise of deposit tokens as a viable means of representing fiat money on blockchains. Deposit tokens are worth paying attention to anyone interested in the mainstream adoption of institutional DeFi. This is what excites me the most. This is why when people ask me, you know, Max, I know you're real big on Jasmine, and I am, don't get me wrong. You know, pick your number one and your number two. And I've always been consistent about this. I said quant and XRP, okay? Because for me, it's like, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I think that we, we will achieve some of these huge things with Jasmine. This is not FUD. You have to recognize that there are some other ones. And you have to recognize why you need to be diversified. So for some of you newcomers, why put so much emphasis on it? Why Brad Garlinghouse and, you know, Gilbert Verde and all these guys putting so much talk about stable coins, but more in particular, deposit tokens? What the heck is a deposit token? As the name implies, deposit tokens are tokenized versions of commercial bank deposits. These can take different forms. But in regards to finality, they create a tokenized version of this for major currencies in use of the wholesale payments between banks. And the overledger enables tokenization through wholesale payments between banks. Don't overthink it. The tokens represent funds held by commercial banks in their central bank accounts. can be used for high volume transfers. Look at that. Between participating banks over a blockchain. Deposit tokens can also represent commercial or even retail deposits in banks. Can we just pause on that notion? Let's pause on that. For a lot of people, FUD and quant and saying, I wish they were blockchain uh, you know, selected a particular blockchain and were agnostic. This should be your definitive answer of why they aren't. And why, when we talk about the big money, quant is the big money. They're the big enchilada. They're the big whopper of whoppers of them all. I understand some of you guys, and I respect your opinions, you know, Stefan Eckel and so on. Understand this. If you were a person that was new to BTC back in 2009, 2010, you were excited to see BTC go to a buck. Then you are even more excited to see 2013 BTC go to over $100, right? And then take it to, you know, years later to 1000 and so on. That was little money for a lot of people back then. 
that was paper handing it. Should we treat the likes of Quant as our second chance at, like, for example, what you saw with BTC? I think the answer is yes. If BTC, in my opinion, which is like a freaking meme coin, a very the most expensive meme coin there is, was able to go to 70, was it 75, 76K, right? With virtually no utility other than having the label of, you know, digital gold and uh, high store value and so on. What about this one that is literally creating, you know, a, a central bank marketplace? Can we call it that? A central bank marketplace. We talk about all the money in the world. You're having seven. I don't get excited here. Sorry. You're having seven of the biggest banks in the world. So it's not a case of the BIS, the central bank of central banks. You're having all of them, right? This is huge, absolutely huge. You know me, I don't normally say, I know a lot of content creators, everything is huge, right? I get that. But this really is huge. The research shows that. Let's pull, uh, blow this up a little bit more. Deposit tokens represent commercial or even retail deposits of banks. One of the most advanced and well-known today is JP Morgan's JPM coin. Tokenized version of US bank or US dollars held on account by JP Morgan clients. JP Morgan coin allows for fast, efficient transfers within the bank. Since its launch in 2020, the coin has been issued to more than 300 billion in transfers or US dollars. While currently available to the bank's institutional or corporate users. JP Morgan plans to extend the system to, of course, retail use. I've given you guys that examples before. How is that possible? Well, it's possible with the RLN, and that's why we did those deep dives. All right, enough talk about this. I wanted to show you guys some of the extensive research. So, you will, you know, excuse me, we gave you some examples in regards to yesterday's dates, and boy, were they powerful. Understand this from the quant network officially back when January 21st, 2022, why reference this? Trust me. You'll understand here in a bit. So they stated then that they look forward to providing input to who the federal reserves new paper on CBDC. There are significant benefits to be realized for interoperability, payment efficiency, cybersecurity, and private protection. That again was January 21st, 2022. Why is that such a big deal? Because you have to keep in mind during that time, so much talk about what? So much talk about Project Hamilton. So we went from Project Hamilton to obviously Project Agora. I think Project Agora, uh, Agora is the mother load of them all, right? But it's nice to see this reference being mentioned. Of course, you could check out the uh, Fed paper for all those guys that, you know, there's always some Yahoo that say, well, the Fed didn't mention it. Yeah, they mentioned it. Go check it out. There's the link. So Board of Governors, Federal Reserve, quote, we look forward to engaging with the public elected representatives and a broad range of stakeholders as we examine the positives and negatives of central bank digital currency. Where? In the United States. In the United States. From who? Yes, Jerome Powell. See how it all comes together? I get accused sometimes of like some people saying, like, you don't get right quick to it. Hey, guess what? I'm going to do me. You do you. I will not apologize for bringing a solid outline. I see people consistently complain about, you know, they just jump over things and so on. Don't jump over stuff. That's the whole point of watching the outline. Yeah, I get it. Sometimes I could put some chapters, but, you know, at least I do it on the Y show. Now. Look at this. This is a new update from actually the Quant website, Quant Network. Look at this. This is, again, getting the actual visuals, some of the juicy stuff. I promise. I, I said it earlier on the outline. We'll get into it. We're definitely going to get into it. And look at this for yourself. you see here why this all matters. So why Quant? Well, trusted partner for organizations such as the BIS, such as Lackchain, and pioneers in interoperable blockchain for enterprises and the financial system. I love how they use pioneers. You know, Gilbert Verdi and his ties to the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, since when? 1984, 86, something like that. You know, th those guys were the pioneers of, of the Internet. You know, you can uh, love and appreciate the idea that Quant 
his very own Gilbert Verdian has these connections to the IETF. So pioneers in interoperable blockchain for enterprises in the financial system, we make blockchain simple, trust, and future-proof. You guys heard that expression a lot, interoperability. But again, look what it says below that. The future of finance will be built in interconnected networks with value in the form of smart money, tokenized assets, information flowing freely between them. Between them. Look at this other reference. Here's some of the new info. Now we have visuals. Remember how people were talking about what was speculative? You know, do they have a breakdown of how much it will cost to use the overledger? Well, the answer is yes. Here, a person with their institution or somebody building their blockchain, you know, they can even start a demo, a trial of all this, right? Look what it says. Let's give you this example. You can start a plan for testing. Testing on what? Multi-chain APIs, multi-programming language SDKs. By the way, Quant Papa in a visual coming up here soon has proof, proof of those SDKs. I definitely want to share that with you. Access to two public test nets, two token flow deployments, chain agnostic smart contract templates. Templates? They're providing templates for chain agnostic smart contract templates? Of course they are. Because Quant in itself is blockchain agnostic. What about one bridge flow deployment? You get where it's going with this. Now it gets a little bit more expensive because we're dealing with now probably like institutions and so on. It says, when you're ready to launch, this, this is good stuff. I know it's technical, but it's good stuff because it gives us an idea of how this flows. So let's say we are a blockchain. Let's say we are an institution. What are we going to do when we're ready to launch? Well, you get everything in Start Plus. Access to two public mainnets of your choice. Of your choice. This is back to the whole reference of Overledger can literally, you know, quickly move to the XRPL, XDC, uh, IOTA. Remember those examples we shared? And remember what it also mentioned, guys? It said specifically on the example that if there wasn't one listed to contact them where they can do the support. So when we talk about interoperability across the board, this is pounding that home 110%. Jumping more into this, look what it also mentions. Access to quant support via email. Um, and this last part, this is really good. $379 a month to interconnect multiple systems. You get everything in Deploy Plus, five public mainnets of your choice, right? That's three more, up to 50 token deployments. And again, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because for all the people saying that you don't need the QNT token, like, you know, some of the people just haven't educated themselves saying, well, why would I want to get into quant? They're really not going to use the QNT token, right? We talked about this numerous times, but boom, there's your boilet match that's sticking in the stew moment because this tells me this is utility in motion. Literally reference, uh, referencing the token, up to 50 token deployments, up to 20 bridge deployments, up to 20 testnet transaction signing keys, smart contract deployer, API, discounts on smart contract audits. Again, you're using more of their utility, which is what their new product, smart, um, excuse me, uh, quant authorized, right? And again, access to over ledger authorized, right? You get it, right? I just want to give you some of the, those examples. I know this is really big deep dive, um, and I don't do this all the time. Some people think I do, but I really don't. Let's share this tab instead. Plan selection. Look at this. Chain agnostic smart contract templates. Um, one test net. It gives you like a breakdown of how this all goes together, right? And look at this. This is enterprise. Bespoke plans to organizations that need world-class support and dedicated infrastructure. I mean, it, it, we're finally getting some of those examples of how this all comes together. Let's share the next part of what we have. If you go to Quant Network right now, um, you know, quant.network, I believe, their site, they have this all ready for you. Overlays your pricing plans for every stage of your project, every. And look at this. Here's another example. Again, you know, back to what we kind of were talking about before how it all comes together, right? All right, here is some of that juicy stuff I was talking about. This is more of the technical side, but this is, this is worth sharing. You know how we talked about that 
Quant will do it all. Will literally do it all. How does it do it all? Well, you got to understand if you are making or declaring to the world that come on over to Overleisure. Um, you don't have to learn all this coding language. Before it used to be you have to do three lines of code. Then the last update was it doesn't require any coding at all. This shows that. I'm going to blow it up a little bit more for you. This literally shows that. Look at this. Look what it mentions. You have the examples. So C, C Sharp, C++. Look at all this. HTTP, Java, JavaScript, JSON. And on and on and on. Look at this bottom one. What the heck is that? Swift? Yeah. Even how we reference Swift. Because that would be what? The MT language uh, messaging model, right? They use their own code and so on. So the bottom line is this. When you see that example about Swift, and you understand that Overleisure, ISOTC 307, the quant network standard. So Swift connecting through the Overleisure, through ISOTC 307, those particular standards, and then ISO 222 goes live. Remember how we said quant overledger through ISO TC 307 will complement ISO 222? When you see this visualization here, that should be your proof in the pudding, if you will. And even in regards to, you know, some that's written in code, you see some of this literally mentioned. Um, the call for requests in the code and the response. The response in regards to, like it says, gateway fee. I, I shared this to you guys before. Amount zero unit is what? QNT. So that activates what? The QNT token. Okay, this whole thing. This is why you need to watch to the end. That shows proof that it is the QNT token. These people saying that you don't need, institutions won't need QNT. The hell they won't. You just didn't look more into it yourself. Not you guys specifically, but you know what I mean. Getting more into this part, Quant Developer Hub, simplify your blockchain, build on overledger APIs, issue, connect, and monitor assets on any blockchain without expertise or without coding. That's crucial. They have tutorials, integrations, use cases. All right, I'm going to get into the real good stuff as the icing on the cake. Here's some of that icing on the cake, okay? Look at this. Finally, and this comes from developers.quant.network. This is a document about supply chain. It says, here we present a use case we tested in-house for a fictitious company called Clear Supply. Introduction. By harnessing the power of blockchain overledger, you can offer enterprises and their customers opportunities to, to delve into a product complete, you know, their complete journey from origin to store shelf revolutionizing how consumers understand and interact with the products they use. Blockchain technology assigns a distinct address, right? I don't want to get to all that stuff. But with this system, consumers would gain unprecedented insight into the journey of raw materials, tracking each transformation at every location. So guys, remember how I mentioned a long time ago that Quant is also part of the supply chain mix? And some people were saying, nope, it's only XDC. That's ridiculous, okay? Why would you have interoperability with XDC and be, being able to have that function on Overleisure to switch to XDC if you are not part of the supply chain mix? So it says they can zoom in on ethics, initiatives, standards in place, empowering them to make informed decisions, truly support sustainable ethical products. But the use case of clear supply, again, this is just a made up example states this let's frame this example by examining a t-shirt's journey from cotton farm to a store again th this is literally for any dev to see or anybody that's building a blockchain to see to see countless examples of how this all comes to play so when we talk about lack chain okay and and, and seeing something like how does it really like what are the real visuals of that utility in motion they literally explain in detail about how this is all broken down. I'll just get into this for just a brief moment. It says, once grown, harvested, Mario creates cotton tokens for his crop and ships it to their mill. One token equals one kg of cotton. Cotton is sustainably grown and certified organic, part of the Fair Trade Alliance. 
On arrival at the mill, the cotton is transformed into bolts of cloth. The cotton tokens are transferred to the mill's address, and the cotton is consumed. Each token is burned. New tokens are generated by the mill's smart contract for the bolts. Again, guys, this is what? This is using the quant token through Lackchain, through the whole concept of tokenization. This is an example of utility in motion. Look at this part. Cotton is sustainably grown, certified organic, part of the Fair Trade Alliance. Look at this about ethical trading initiative. Member of the ethical trade initiative. You have all these member countries, Brazil, Peru, etc., etc. And on the top right part, items are then packed and shipped with our partners to stores around the UK. Around the UK. Interesting. Understand the groundwork that was all put into place. This is why I share you all those interviews and recordings of you know, a guy from the House of Commons and all this stuff tracked, logged each touch point away from the mill, the bolts and the tokens. They're transferred to the factory for their final transformation to epic polo shirts. The bolt tokens are burned. Each garment is given its own unique token carrying the history of material so far accessible via QR code attached to the item. One bolt equals 10 unique polo shirts. Interesting. That's a great example of seeing, as I would say, utility in motion. And getting into the next part of what we have is this. To me, this is the icing on the cake. As you go to developers.quant.network, they have this part about docs slash loan dash service. And when you get into the top left, look at all these things. Setting up access to overledger, authentication, all this stuff, transaction Transaction APIs, uh, web hooks. Remember with XRP, they talked a lot about that. Smart contract API, token API, overviews for everything, third party integrations, use cases, supply chain. Back to this part about lending. They create this example about transparent and efficient way to lend. Look at this part introduction. Demonstrate how to develop a loan service using Ethereum smart contracts to provide a transparent an efficient alternative to traditional lending systems. Now, for all you guys who are saying, oh, no, why would they want to do that? You got to keep in mind, if a token is going to be built through the overledger and you do go with this particular solution, you're looking at what? A QRC20 smart contract. You're not looking at ERC20 at all. Okay? And so for people who are like, well, it's going to be too slow. If it's QRC20, again, what was the example we showed? The RLN. And what is the RLN access? M10. So you could have the case of 1 million TPS if that's even needed. Maybe some of these projects don't want to do that. Maybe they feel as though 10,000 TPS is more adequate. It just depends on the project. But the loan service application can be used by any blockchain. I love this part. Again, this is where Overledger comes into the mix. So we define a loan as a sum of money. We understand that. Payback with interest. Here's the benefits. Trust and transparency. Interest rate, terms, lower cost. It gives a breakdown of how their loan service can be built and made and how you can set it up. So again, th th this is just another example. And if anything, I'll blow this part up. But I love this part about Zapier. So they give this example about Bob. Sets up Zapier integration with Overledger to receive email notifications throughout the life of the loan. Notifications will be used to update internally and customers. Do we give you a visualization? Well, yes. What do you see? Loan service, email generator, Overledger, watch new contract event, kicks over to the email from loan data, and it reads it from a smart contract. I think you guys see this. Let me just double check. Yeah, you do see it. It reads it from a smart contract, then it routes it. Then the route takes it over to the loan request of the requested email. Then it even routes it to the loan states for like updates. Then it even takes it to the loan repayment part. This is the whole concept, if you think about it, even when it comes to lenders, because let's face it, central banks do what? They lend. So to have this as also an example, is a uh, is crucial to understanding the bigger picture of things. So with that said, guys, you finally have some of that nitty gritty. 
and I was glad to be able to provide it to you. For me personally, when it comes to all of this, when you've seen the examples about, you know, the BIS being the central bank of central banks, that was a big step forward for Quant, especially Bank of England. But now this call to action for all the central banks to be on board, that is huge. And to see the examples in regards to what does Overledger actually do other than what we've heard, to actually see it, to actually have examples of their product. And of course, just like Microsoft, it'll be an ever-evolving product because this is an operating system, right? As the saying goes, you know, when was it Windows 3.1 back in the 90s and so on? We're now into the modern Windows that we have and so on. And there's not just Windows for people like you and me on the PC. There's Windows Server Editions and so on. My point is this. Quant is a blockchain operating system that is blockchain agnostic. When we talk about the big, big money and the backdoor plumbing, if you will, of Web3, do you now have an idea of how it all really, truly comes together? For some of you guys, they're stating that Quant is too expensive and you don't want to accumulate. I get it. It is expensive. But understand the greater, bigger picture of things. Quant only has roughly 14.88 million tokens. And at the rate of about 81%, give or take, are in circulation. BTC is roughly 21, 22 million coins and so on. BTC, old, outdated tech. Quant Overledger, the new standard. What standard? The ISO TC307 standard. This is why Quant will always be part of my tied for number one with XRP. And why I won't ever stop talking about it. And if anything, give you guys continuous updates when I can. I know we don't cover Quant every single day, but this one absolutely took the cake in my eyes. So with that said, that's going to conclude the Quant network coverage of the night. Shout out to the one and only Mr. I love it when we co they call me Quant Papa, as he would say. Quant Papa, you knocked it out of the park with all the visuals, videos, and so on. Can't thank you enough. So with that also said, let's kick it back into the comments. 283 people here live, 58 on YouTube, 225 on X. Not bad numbers. I do appreciate it, guys. Let's kick it back to uh, the next bit of comments that we have. And let's read what we have. Um, Will Fix says, Gilbert is speaking about custody. That was at 725. That was a while ago. So that was probably like over an hour deep dive. Well, one of those things. Um, Kid Grebo, welcome back. Maximus Crypto, peace and peace to the chat. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Hope to see more of you. Um, all right. Let's see here. Let's go further down. Oh, this is about Boomer. Uh, yeah, Boomer. Definitely on sale. Kmart Blue Light Special. I remember those. I used to like Kmart's ice cream when I was a kid, man. You know, I love the Superman ice cream. You ever guys had Superman ice cream? See, I like bubble gum ice cream, but I don't like biting into bubble gum while I'm trying to enjoy my ice cream and then chewing on the bubble gum. But Superman ice cream is literally bubble gum ice cream minus what? The little bits and pieces of bubble gum. I can't find Superman ice cream anywhere anymore, but it was at Kmart. And it was my favorite ice cream other than rum raisin. Little known fact, rum raisin is Max's favorite ice cream. Anyway, not like anybody really cares. But if you guys want to share your favorite ice cream, you can definitely share it. What does that have to do with Quant? Absolutely nothing. All right. Let's see here. Ambridge is saying, I don't know what you're saying there. That's okay. Um, okay, good stuff there. Let's go further down. Let's read this. Or actually, welcome OG Crypto, Mr. Gangsta Gangsta. Tell me about the days of way back. Thank you for being here, Boomer, or uh, OG Crypto, and also Boomer, yeah. And let's read this from Trust Truth. That's part of the scam, of course. They make it like it's natural until they force the CBDCs, uh, the new way to spend money. I get it, but even with the old traditional models and so on, um, you know, it, it was like, you know, like, how about this? I mean, back in the 90s, it was like a lot of people thought that, um, what was it, debit cards would be, you know, like, it's just all going to be forced, debit cards only, and people were still able to use cash. But understand, you know, um, I do think there's good and bad in, in it. I'm not advocating necessarily for it, but, you know, I'm not going to be on the wrong side 
uh, just like I was with BTC, and get flooded out of that. That's not justifying evil. It's just being real about some of this stuff. Stefan Eckel says, Biss, Embridge, Swift. Yes, yes, good stuff. Stump Rider says, I'm killing it. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Glad somebody appreciated it. Um, let's welcome Cal Kulun. Nice avatar. I like that avatar. It looks cool. Stefan Echo, Max, is likely a good cup of hot soup, but not a cup of coffee. Thanks, Maximus, for the uh, show. You love it so much more. Thanks for all your fluffy stuff. I don't have no fluff. <laughs> Real people like you are one in a million. Ah, well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Crypto Coin Guy, what? That's what she said. Oh, boy. All right, Lyle Whammer, if I pronounced that right. I do recognize your avatar. To become wealthy, you have to conquer human emotions. The proof of quant is there. Ignore the daily chart. It means nothing. I agree. Well said. Well said. I mean, the way I looked at when quant dropped to 80, a lot of you guys loaded up. Shout out to Will Fix. I know he loaded up. What a time to load up. Some of you guys have been to quant since like 40 bucks. All right. Um, it does have crazy utility and let's read this. The sheep must be really PO'd that they are not getting a cut. Hmm. All right. Let's read a couple more comments before we wrap it up. Quality food. Dutch makes it so easy to make. It's fabricated and modified best farmers food markets. Oh. Black wood. Clearly not from Inglewood, right? Shout out to Patrick Collier, Henry Brown, and all the guys. Inglewood. Okay. All right. I remember bubblegum ice cream. Nice. One of the many pleasures that have been ripped from our lives. Yes. Why is that? I mean, don't get me wrong. Somebody give me bubblegum ice cream. I'm going to eat it. I just don't like the idea of eating gum. You know, um, they're eating bubblegum, you know, like, but, the, you know, I don't know. It is what it is. But Superman ice cream solved that problem, right? Kmart, RIP. Let's, let's read this last comment. There might be more, but anyway. Quant over leisure will move. My Hagen does chocolate ice cream through the blockchain and the burn the tokens after they are transported to my fridge. Yes, Yavor Obers. Welcome to the last part of the show. All of you guys that are connected on the X platform, not chatting when you can chat to 135 of you, are uh, tuned into Maximus Crypto and only 57. You should join us over here on the YouTube where we talk about the tokenization, where you eat lots of bugs. And then later on July 20th, you will watch the fight of who? Mike Tyson versus. Uh, Jake Paul, I'm going to scientifically knock him out in the first round. And then I'm going to go to Kentucky Fried Chicken and get myself a, a side of slaw. Because I like slaw. Slaw tastes good. All right, enough about that, right? Anyway. You like that? Anyway. All right, good stuff. <laughs> You're talking in a chat? Well, now you are. Anyway, I'm glad to have you. Guys, we're going to wrap it up. Two hours and eight minutes. It's been a great show. I think we t might have ticked up to 300. I just miss it. But right now it's 296. Can't thank you guys enough. Smash the like on the way out. And of course, obviously, we're all looking forward to, uh, you know, watching Mike Tyson on uh, July 20th, you know, hopefully knock out Jake Paul. I'm rooting for Iron Mike. Um, and if Iron Mike wins, I think all of us, you know, should go down to Kentucky Fried Chicken and get ourselves a slice of slaw because, you know, when you eat slaw, you know, it's just a very tasty thing, you know. So there you go. All right. Have a good one. Sayonara from the Race Crop Consortium. Let's go. And also, check out the content from Will Fix. If you don't know who Will Fix is, um, in closing, I'll give him a plug real quick because he deserves it. He's my, he's like my big brother, okay? I love this guy to death. Here is Will Fix's channel. You need to check it out. If you don't, then, um, you know, Mike Tyson got to come to your house and, and knock you out in the first round, all right? So with that said, here is his channel. Um, let's take a look at him real quick. Here he is. He used to do live shows with us. Why doesn't he do it anymore? It's okay. Um, because, you know, uh, live show scam. Oh, I'm kidding. Uh, here is Will Fix's channel. You can look up his channel at Will Fix, or you can just type in like Will Fix XRP. 
Uh, there he is, him and his lovely wife. And listen, congratulations to Will. Look at that, guys. He is up to 11,000 subs, right? 11,000 subs. My God. Um, and you want to know the one that went viral? Is this one. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, why wouldn't anybody not go viral with, with a picture of that? You know what I mean? Like, that wasn't even planned. Look how happy he looks, you know? You're having a bad day. Just come to Will Fix's channel. He'll, 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 you know, lighten up your life, right? Boom XRP, 25K overnight, his reasons. That went viral. And even Zach Rector, you know, uh, did a response video to that. So, um, yeah, go ahead and check it out. Here's some of his latest videos. Uh, he's got XRP to make a stable coin. We just talked about that earlier. Maybe you want to see his perspective. Um, he also has boom XRP price predictions over 13 bucks. His reasons for that. He doesn't really do fluff. He gives at least you guys some, you know, reasons for it. Um, he has been killing it on the XRP AMM signups, crazy markets and so on. Um, I love his, you know, XRP machine gun rally. In fact, let's give you a taste of that. Um, so cool. Let's go ahead and play this from the one and only Will Fix. Here we go. This is a bonus segment. All right. Hopefully you enjoy this. All right. Hold on a second. I got to play that. Give him a like right there. All right. Here we go. This is cool stuff. Look at that killer thumbnail. This was without liquidity from big banks and institutional value. And with the lawsuit ending, then big increases is coming. Bigger things is coming. Only real XRP holders will realize this soon. Cosmic Connoisseur, I can't wait. Keeps bearing it. Keeps bearing it. Michael Holotech, repeat this in 2024. Talking about the 36,018% gain. Gobbinator, please. XRP, believe, have faith. XRP, well, if I gave you 10,000 XRP, would you sell or hold? I use the Decent Wallet, and I like it because the screen is large, and it has a thumbprint access. All right, I'm going to play my on. So you guys can obviously check out his channel. One more plug for Will. He's on X. He's trying to build up his X because X going to give it to you. And uh, yes, check this out. Here he is. And he can be followed over on X. And it's over at Will Fix 7 W-I-L-L-F-I-X-7. And uh, just give you guys a heads up. Hey, there's, there's my mug. That's kind of cool. Um... Or is it, Will? You, you guys still have this, man. He had another one that went viral, guys. That's pretty cool. Um, so uh, where is this? So it's further down. Oh, man, look at that. My Jasmine video's got 9,200. I get way more views on X. Anyway, that's okay. Um, yeah, he's got this one that really went viral again. I mean, it really did really good. I, I had to point this out. It was just such a cool thing. Um, it was about Sologenic. You could check out more about that. Um, where where you at, Will? We yet, we yet. There you go. There it is. Look at this, guys. So you talked about the AMM. Let's full screen this for a second. Uh, going live. He's killing it when it comes to the AMM coverage. Go to his channel and learn more about the AMM. Um, and so... He posted this three hours before it went live. So the X algorithm warded him with 79,000 views. My goodness, 30 people bookmarked it, 522 likes, 122 retweets, 210 engagements. You want to talk about boiling it, mashing it, sticking it in a stew? Yes, Will Fix is the place for you. All right. Shout out to my brother, Will Fix. Love this guy to death. You are the man. If you ever want to come on a live show again, you're more than welcome. And uh, you guys got to go follow Will. I'm telling you flat out. Go follow Will. You'd be glad you did. And I think I'm going to finally wrap it up. So, yes, you're very welcome. You know, thank you for everything. For not getting knifed out in the, in the third round. Anyway, I'm kidding. Uh, you're very welcome. Have a good one. And by all means, people, 
I want to state this. I understand some of you guys are fans of fish and chips, okay? I understand some of you guys like Long John Silvers. It's really salty. But think outside the box for a change. If you think outside the box with crypto, you'll think outside the box when it comes to Long John Silvers fish and chips. Now, this isn't sponsored by Long John Silvers, but hear me out. We did mention Mike Tyson getting some flaw. So what you want to do is when you go to Long John Silvers the next time, you want to order a family size of slaw, okay? Family size of slaw, and you want to take some of that coleslaw and place it on top of your beer batter fish. You'll never go back to tartar sauce from there ever again. I'm telling you flat out, it's really good. All right. I promise I'm out. Sign R from the Rice Crop Consortium. Smash that like on your way out. Been a great show. Possibly will be with you guys tomorrow. I don't know. And if I'm not, then maybe if there's a bullish investor place coverage, we'll see what happens. I got a lot to chop up. So maybe not tomorrow, but we'll see. Cool Cat Crypto, you can watch the replay of the BSV segment. You guys have a great one. Bye bye. Over and out. Blockchain is spurring a revolution in the way we create, record, and trade value. Its benefits, security, transparency, efficiency, can be applied to areas as diverse as payments, capital markets, and supply chains. That's why assets of all kinds are being tokenized on blockchains, making their ownership immutable, their provenance traceable, and their use manageable. The potential is enormous. But every blockchain is complex and creates a different walled garden of connections and functionality. Today, the decentralized world of blockchain is made up of closed environments, limiting liquidity and leading to increased risk and lost opportunity. Every digital asset must be created specifically for each chain, demanding dedicated developer skills, which are hard to find, time consuming to master and expensive to develop. Overledger Platform from Quant establishes a new benchmark for blockchain interoperability and ease of use. As a low-code enterprise-grade platform, Overledger empowers you to deploy, connect and develop on any blockchain quickly and simply. With Overledger, you can generate an interoperable digital asset with just a few clicks. Create secure smart contracts that can execute on any blockchain without having to hire a team of experts. And you can use its advanced APIs to integrate with your systems and manage your assets on multiple chains. We believe that the blockchain economy should be simple, trusted and future-proof. These are our principles and the genesis of Overledger Platform, the enterprise standard for building on blockchain.